dear students we are going to discuss food fermentation part 4 bread making bread is known to man even from about 4000 bc today bread is a major food of the world and it supplies over half of the caloric and vitamin intake of the world's population the basic ingredients in bread making are flour water salt and yeast in modern bread making some other additives such as yeast food sugar milk eggs emulsifiers antifungal agents enzymes and antioxidants flavoring and enriching ingredients are also used flour as the chief ingredient of bread it is produced by milling wheat flour contains starch 70% starch 7 to 15% protein 1% sugar and 1% lipids flour proteins are of two types the first type is soluble in water and dilute salt solutions and this is known the foaming protein it forms about 15% of the total protein in flour and include albumins globulins peptides amino acids and enzymes the second type flour protein is gluten which contributes the 85% of flour protein and they are insoluble in aqueous media and these are responsible for the formation gluten form an elastic structure when moistened with water and it holds the starch yeast gases and other components of duff one third portion of gluten is alcohol soluble fraction that is known as gladiolins and the two third portion of gluten is non alcohol soluble and this portion is known as the glutenins gladiolins are of lower molecule weight than glutenins yeast used for baking for bread making is saccharomyces cerevisiae the yeast should have certain ideal properties to be used in baking they are their ability to grow rapidly at room temperature their easy dispersibility in water ability to produce larger amounts of carbon dioxide in the flour dough ability to resist auto lysis when stored at 20 degree celsius the yeast should have a good keeping quality the ability of yeast to adapt rapidly to various substrates during the tough making the yeast should have high invertase and other enzyme activity so as to hydrolyze sucrose the yeast should be able to grow and synthesize enzymes and coenzymes under anaerobic conditions in the dough the yeast should be able to resist the osmotic effect of salts and sugars in the dough these are the ideal characteristics that a yeast should possess to be used in bread making the amount of yeast vary from 2 to 3 percentage of flour weight the amount of yeast used during baking depends upon the flour type very strong flours such as the flour having high protein levels require more yeast than the softer types of wheat flour also the baking systems which involve shorter periods of dough formation need more amount of yeast to be added the major roles of yeast in bread making are leavening flavor formation and increased nutritiveness the next ingredient is a yeast food which contains a calcium salt an ammonium salt and an oxidizing agent such as iodate bromate and peroxide these molecules help to strengthen the colloidal structure of the wheat gluten ammonium acts as a nitrogen source for the yeast and the oxidizing agent strengthens gluten and enhances its ability to hold gas release during the formation generally yeast food has the following composition 30% calcium sulfate 9.4% ammonium chloride 35% sodium chloride 0.3% potassium bromate and 25% starch another ingredient during bread making is sugar it is added as sucrose or fructose corn syrup these are added to provide additional carbon nourishment for the yeast to sweeten the bread 
and for more rapid browning of the crust during sugar caramelization. This browning of the crust allows greater moisture retention within the bread. Animal and vegetable fats are added as shortenings in bread making at about 3% of flour in order to yield increased loaf size, a more tender crumb and to have enhanced slicing properties. Animal and vegetable fats generally added are butter, lard or soybean oil. Emulsifiers are used in conjunction with shortening to ensure a better distribution of shortening in the dough. Emulsifiers contain a fatty acid such as palmitic or stearic acid which is bound to glycerol, lactic acid, sorbic acid or tartaric acid. They are added at 0.5% floor weight. Commonly used emulsifiers are calcium sterile to lactylate, lactylic stearate, sodium sterile fumarate etc. Milk is added to make the bread more nutritious to help to improve the crust color by sugar caramelization and also for its buffering values. Milk is added at a ratio of 1 to 2 parts per 100 parts of flour. About 2% sodium chloride is usually added during bread making for the following purposes. It improves taste, it stabilizes yeast fermentation, it acts as, acts as a toughening effect on the gluten, it helps to minimize proteolytic activities and it participates in the lipid binding of the dough. Since salt has a retarding effect on fermentation, it is added only towards the end of the mixing. Water, it is needed to form gluten, to permit swelling of the starch and to provide a medium for the various reactions that take place in the dough formation. Amylolytic enzymes are required for the breakdown of starch in the flour into fermentable sugars. For this, flour is supplemented with malted barley or wheat which provide alpha amylase or fungal or bacterial amylase preparations may be added to the flour. Bacterial amylase from Bacillus subtilis or enzymes from Aspergillus oryzae are generally used. Mold inhibitors or antimycotics are added to prevent fungal growth. Generally added mold inhibitors are calcium propionate, sodium diacetate, vinegar, monocalcium phosphate, lactic acid, etc. So we discussed about the various ingredients in bread making. Now we will discuss the process of bread making. There are 8 steps involved in the process of bread making. They are pre-fermentation or sponge mixing, duff mixing, cutting and rounding of the duff, first or intermediate proofing of the duff, molding of the duff, secondary proofing, baking and finally cooling and slicing of the bread and wrapping. So the first stage in the process of bread making is pre-fermentation or sponge mixing. This is to produce the inoculum. A portion of the ingredients is mixed with yeast with or without flour to produce an inoculum. During this process, the yeast becomes adapted to the growth conditions of the dough and it rapidly multiplies. The second stage is dough mixing. The rest of the ingredients is mixed together with the pre-fermented inoculum to form the dough. Maximum gluten development occurs during this process. The next step in bread making is the cutting and rounding. The dough formed during the above procedure is cut into specific weights and is rounded by using machines. In the fourth st stage, that is the first or intermediate proofing, the dough is allowed to rest for about 15 minutes at about 27 degrees Celsius. This is done in an equipment known as overhead proofer. 
in the fifth stage of bread making that is molding the duff is flattened to a sheet and then molded again and placed in a baking pan which confer a particular shape to the loaf in the next stage that is the second proofing this consists of holding the duff for about 1 hour at 35 to 43 degrees celsius at a high level of humidity the next stage during the process of bread making is baking during baking the proofed duff in the pan is transferred to the oven where it is subjected to a high temperature generally greater than 200 degrees celsius approximately 215 to 30 to 35 degrees celsius is used and the time duration varies from 17 to 23 minutes or 45 to 60 minutes as the baking progresses the temperature increases and it rises the gas production and various events will occur baking is the final stage and this determines the success of bread making during baking the temperature on the outside of the bread will be above 195 degrees celsius while the internal temperature never exceeds 100 degrees celsius the higher outside temperature results in the browning of the crust the next stage is the cooling slicing and wrapping of the bread the bread is deep panned removed from the pan it is cooled to 4 to 5 degrees celsius it is sliced the slicing is optional sometimes the bread may be sliced sometimes it may not be sliced and then it is wrapped three different systems of bread making are generally used and these systems differ in the presence or absence of the pre fermentation stage the different systems are sponge duff the liquid ferment system and the straight duff system sponge duff this is the most widely used in the sponge duff a portion generally 60 to 70 percentage of the flow is mixed with water yeast and yeast food in a slurry tank known as ingredator during the pre fermentation step a spongy material develops due to the bubbles caused by alcohol and carbon dioxide and hence this system is termed as a sponge duff the sponge is allowed to rest at about 27 degrees celsius at a relative humidity of 75 to 80 percentage for about 3 to 5 hours during this period the sponge rise 5 to 6 times and then it will collapse spontaneously during the next stage the sponge is mixed with all the other ingredients it is processed and then baked the next system is a liquid ferment system in this system water yeast yeast food malt sugar salt and milk are mixed during the pre fermentation at about 30 degrees celsius for about 6 hours after this procedure flour and other ingredients are added and mixed to form the duff then it is further baked the straight duff system in this system all the components are mixed at the same time until a duff is formed the duff is then allowed to ferment at about 28 to 30 degrees celsius for 2 to 4 hours and then it is baked the straight dough system is usually used for home bread making. The Chorleywood bread process or CBP is a modification of the straight dough process and it is generally used in UK and Australia. Here all the components are mixed together in 3 to 5 minutes. Oxidizing agents and a high level of yeast are added and there is no pre-fermentation during this process. In the continuous bread making systems, the duff will be handled without interruption. The ingredients will be mixed, allowed to ferment, deposited in the pan and baked in a continuous manner. Coming to the role of yeast in bread making, we already discussed that the yeast is responsible for leavening and it also improves the nutritive qualities of bread. 
So, leavening is the increase in the size of the dough due to gas formation during bread making. Leavening may be brought about by a number of different ways such as air or carbon dioxide forced into the dough, the water vapor or steam which develops during baking, added hydrogen peroxide which release oxygen into the dough, carbon dioxide released by the use of decarboxylase enzymes or by the use of baking powder which generate carbon dioxide on contact with water. But generally, bread is leavened by using yeast. During bread making, yeast ferment hexose sugars mainly into alcohol and carbon dioxide and various other alcohols, esters, aldehydes and organic acids will also be formed. The carbon dioxide formed will dissolve in the dough and the excess carbon dioxide in the gaseous state begins to form bubbles in the dough. This formation of bubbles causes the dough to rise or to leaven. The total time taken by the yeast to act upon the dough varies from 2 to 6 hours. There are several factors which affect the leavening action by yeast. They are the nature of sugar available, the osmotic pressure, the effect of nitrogen and other nutrients, the effect of fungal inhibitors and finally the yeast concentration. First one, the nature of sugars available, glucose fructose or sucrose are first utilized if added. If no added sugars are there, then the maltose in the flour will be utilized by the yeast. The most rapid leavening is achieved by using glucose. Osmotic pressure. High osmotic pressures inhibit yeast action. Therefore, salt is added as late as possible during the dough formation process. Next is the effect of nitrogen and other nutrients. The addition of minerals and a nitrogen source increases gas production since they act as a nitrogen source for the yeast growth. The next factor is the effect of fungal inhibitors. The antimycotics which we add to prevent the growth of fungus will also inhibit yeast growth. So, the antimycotics should be used at a minimum level inhibitory to yeast. The fifth factor is yeast concentration. The amount of yeast also influence the extent of leavening in the bread. Next is the flavor development in bread. The aroma of bread is distinct from all other fermented foods. This is due to the baking process. During baking, the lower boiling point molecules which are generated during fermentation will escape and there will be formation of new compounds due to chemical reactions that are taking place during the baking temperature. The flavor compounds found in bread are organic acids, esters, alcohols, aldehydes, ketones and several other carbonyl compounds. So, we were discussing about bread making. We discussed various stages involved in bread making and the role of yeast in bread making. Thank you so much for listening.